Hello and welcome. My name is Christian and this is Encounter Scuba. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys about the number one rule of scuba. We're going to talk about what it is, the science behind it, and what happens to the human body if this rule is broken. You're not going to want to miss this. Stick around to the end because it's interesting the why behind it. You need to know why is this the number one rule. If this is the kind of content you like, go ahead and hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really helps us out with the algorithm. All right, let's get into the content. The number one rule of scuba diving is to never hold your breath. That seems to be obvious, right? I mean, you have a full cylinder of air, so why would you hold your breath? You're not free diving. So why would something so obvious need to be explained or even need to be told to someone? Divers are taught this at the very basic scuba course. During your open water certification, you will learn this. Even on Discovery Scubas, which is not a certification program, but more like an introduction and a tour, uh, this is taught because it's so important. There's a reason it's the number one. So let's talk about the science behind this number one rule of scuba. As we said, the rule is never hold your breath. It's very simple. It seems like it should go without saying. So why do we stress this rule so much? All right, so the science behind this is based on a law of physics called Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that pressure and volume vary inversely when the temperature is constant. Now pressure is increased as scuba divers go to depth because of the weight of the water on top of them. So we know because of Boyle's law that as we descend deeper, pressure increases, that pressure is gonna vary inversely with volume. That principle affects our lungs as divers because our lungs are a compressible airspace. It can cause our lungs to compress. It can cause the air to compress but it's not so much descending that's the problem as it is ascending. But when a diver ascends from just 33 feet, this pressure is going to cut in half, which means if you were to hold your breath from 33 feet up to the surface, your lung size would have to double because as that pressure cuts in half, that inverse relationship comes into effect so the volume has to double. So you can see how this would be problematic because the lungs are only set to expand to a certain size. So what happens when you break this law? That gets us into part three of this video, the part you've been waiting for. What happens to the human body when this rule is broken? So I wanna start this section by saying that scuba diving is safe, fun, and enjoyable if you follow your training, but you must get trained. None of this should be considered training. This video is not training. This is for entertainment purposes. If you wanna go scuba diving, you need to sign up for a course under a certified instructor from one of the certifying agencies. So get your training. With that being said, what happens to the human body when this rule is broken? There's a lot of things that can happen. We're gonna break them down from most serious to least serious. So inside the human lung, there are these little sacs. There's billions of them and they're called alveoli. These alveoli are responsible for the gas exchange in your body. They're responsible for taking uh, the air from your lungs, taking what you need, the oxygen, and putting it into your bloodstream. It does that because the artery runs right next to the alveoli. The alveoli holds the oxygen. The pressure in the, in the alveoli is higher of oxygen than that in the artery and so it diffuses into the artery and goes to your bloodstream, to your organs that need it. What can happen when you hold your breath is that this pressure, as it increases, can cause the alveoli to rupture. And so if these alveoli rupture, the worst thing that can happen is as they rupture, this tiny air bubble squishes into the artery that's sitting next to that alveoli that has ruptured. This is known as an air embolism. This bubble can do several things as it travels through the body. The first place that it can encounter is the heart. So this bubble travels and it goes to your heart. This can be catastrophic. It can cause a heart attack. Let's say you get lucky and it shunts through the heart. The next place that it's going to go in the heads up position, bubbles like to go up. This bubble can go to your brain. This can cause a stroke. That's also bad news, as you know. So if it doesn't go there, there's another thing that can happen throughout your body your arteries tend to get smaller and thinner. And so this bubble can just keep traveling and traveling until it can't, until it just can't fit because the artery has gotten so small. That can cut off blood flow to whatever organ that it's leading to and can cause organ failure. 
Keep in mind, this can be happening in several arteries at once, so this is not good news. Another thing that can happen is known as a mediastinal emphysema. Now, this is where that air gets into the airspace surrounding the lungs. This pressure buildup in that airspace can cause the lung to rupture which is going to impair your breathing and it could end up being deadly. Mediastinal emphysema also puts pressure on the heart, could cause your heart to stop beating, and we all know what that means. And a third thing that can happen is called a subcutaneous emphysema. This is probably the least threatening thing that can happen, but it can happen. And this subcutaneous means under the skin, so it means that this air travels to the under your skin layer and it's gonna look like that scene from The Mummy where the beetles are running all up the skin. Maybe not that dramatic, but little bubbles form under the skin and they typically travel up to the neck when you're in the heads up position. Remember bubbles like to go up. So you could see a diver that ascended while holding their breath have little bubbles in their neck. So how would you know if a diver is suffering from a lung overexpansion injury? So unlike DCS, decompression sickness, also known as the bends, uh, lung overexpansion injuries tend to show themselves immediately within 15 minutes of occurrence. Uh, the most likely thing that's gonna happen if a diver suffers a lung overexpansion injury is that they will surface, maybe wave their hands over their head to get your attention, something's wrong, and then they pass out immediately. That's a good sign. Uh, and then you're going to want to get the attention of somebody trained to handle this. They're gonna put them on oxygen uh, and call the proper channels, the Coast Guard, whatever it may be, to respond and initiate life-saving procedures. So in conclusion, never hold your breath while scuba diving. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and hit that like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.